Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. ESCOM is legally opposing the regulator's decision to grant four new electricity trading licenses. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss this development and what it signals regarding the energy transition. Hi Terence. Hi Shemal. What did the energy regulator approve at its most recent meeting and how has ESCOM responded? Yeah, it was a highly anticipated meeting uh, because of, this, of these trading licenses. So there are four on the table and um, the regulator members, some are full-time, some are part-time. This is the highest decision-making body of NURSA, sat for, for a good period of time to deliberate on these licenses. And basically the decision was to award four new trading license, licenses as well as an import-export license. Uh, they went to CBR Apollo, um, Discovery Green. Uh, it, it went to an entity called Green Electron Markets, and then also Green Co., which also got this uh, import-export license. So it was deliberated for some time because during earlier public hearings in July, it was a, it came as a surprise to everyone because there was no formal objection made in writing. But Eskim Distribution at that meeting made its opposition to these licenses known. They felt that, uh, that this was uh, against the rules of the, of the regulator itself, which says only there can only be uh, you know, a single maximum of two uh, op operators in a distribution area, and that this was also an attempt by these traders to cherry pick Eskom customers. So they opposed it on that basis. And, uh, and so there was a bit of a deliberation um, by the, by first by the electricity subcommittee and then at the energy regulator itself. And basically the view was that this was a confusing of two different uh, uh, aspects of the electricity market. One is the, the physical distribution and system operation, which Eskom Distribution does and a number of municipality does and then trading, which is a non-physical activity, it's a financial activity where there can be multiple uh, players or participants in a distribution area. So there was this confusion and therefore uh, the regulator felt given that that was the case, uh, they would go ahead and approve these four licenses. Is ESCOM's opposition to these licenses a surprise? Yes and no. No, because we knew in July that they were opposing, opposing it. Yes, because it seems to fly in the face of everything else that's happening in South Africa. And also, yes, because um, it's, it comes after nurses have already approved six trading licenses since 2014, and including, uh, ironically, the NTCSA, which when it was separated from, uh, from Eskom Generation or Eskom as a whole, into its own independent uh, company, not fully unbundled, but as a part of Eskom Holdings. It also applied for a trading license and that was approved without any opposition from Eskom itself, as you'd imagine. So there'd been these trading licenses in operation for some years now. And as I say, it goes against the grain of what is happening in the South African electricity market on the regulatory, but, but also on the legislative front. So we know that the Electricity Regulation Amendment Act has now gone through Parliament. It's been assented to by the President. It hasn't come into force yet. There's been, there are some issues around the definitions, uh, particularly in this distribution area, and the municipalities are particularly concerned. So there's definitely concern in this area. Um, but it really, that sets, in, sets the tone for quite a different electricity supply industry to the one that we had that's been based on a vertically integrated structure. So, but even in this transition period, we've seen traders emerge and they play a key role in, in unlocking, you know, or linking buyers and sellers. Uh, and th they played quite a positive role in that regard, especially for buyers that are looking for, for green electricity or green electrons. So that, so, so yeah, no, in the sense that we know that Eskom's a monopoly. It has had a monopoly mindset for many years. And it's, this is a classic monopoly playbook type action. And no, because we know Eskom has objected in public to this. But yes, because of it going against the grain of where we're going legislatively on a regulatory terms and we're moving to a sort of 
a more competitive multi-market uh, dispensation. So it's a, it's, a, it's, not, it's a surprise, but not a total shock. You know? So I think uh, that's where, where we're at. So that we're now in a process where Eskom is going, taking this to court uh, and is seeking a review. What will happen next? Well, this legal review, we, we don't know when it's going to take place. I think the, the most important thing is it happens quickly. Uh, we need to have certainty as to where traders stand uh, because these are not the last four applications that will come before NERS. So there's going to be many other uh, entities, I think, in future coming forward with their trading ambitions. So I think a lot of entities in the financial space in particular are paying will pay close attention to what the, the court rules here. The problem is there's so many other things that are happening at the moment in the electricity space and all attention at NERSA is going to be on Eskom's revenue application. The, they, they need to, they will, um, will have indicated defend the uh, decision in court uh, when it gets there, but we need to, we don't know when that will take place, how it will take place, and how long it's going to take uh, take to get to a determination. But I think even though there are all these balls in there and there are going to be many more balls for NERSA, I think NERSA is really in a situation where it needs to beef up its capacity because there's a lot coming at it. But it, we really do need the courts to make a decision quickly and hopefully not have a situation where that then gets appealed. The nervousness, I think, for South Africans or people in the energy industries, every time Eskom most recently has taken NERSA to court, they've prevailed. <laughs> so has NERSA once again erred? I don't believe they have. I think they made their case quite clearly at both the hearings at the Electricity Subcommittee as well as at the um, uh, ele Electricity Regulator meeting where the decision was made as to why the distinction that they seem that the Eskom distribution seems to be missing between traders and system operation, physical assets versus non-physical trading activities. But be that as it may, we need clarity. Um, and uh, the courts, like this is a complicated matter for the courts. And again, probably something new, so we need really good, we need good legal representation, good arguments on both sides, clarity as soon as possible, because I think trading is going to be part of the future of the electricity supply industry. And we need those rules to be fully aligned so that there isn't this legal toing and froing every time a new license is granted. Thank you. That's the second tag show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.